we are going to be doing a get to know me slash q a and i'm so excited because i have tried to film this video numerous of times in the five years that i've been on youtube which is crazy to think it's been four and a half five years um but yeah we've grown so much and i feel like all of my day ones and even my new subscribers should get to know me a little more but not like the generic questions you can find on google so I asked someone very close to me that you guys have seen before, my cousin Janelle, to think of some questions for me. And guys, she went in and I was just so, I'm just so appreciative. So shout out to Janelle for these awesome questions. And yeah, they're like juicy and life goal-y and you know, about dating and all that stuff. So let's just get on into it. But first question, what's a challenge you faced that you're particularly proud of overcoming? Well, uh, even the way she worded these, I love it. So a challenge that I am particularly proud of overcoming um, would have to be like the challenge of like work life. Like I knew as everybody knows, you're supposed to work in life to get what you want. You can't just be like a social media person. And it's so crazy to hear some kids be like, oh, I'm just gonna be a gaming streamer and get money, no. Those gaming streamers had to work hard. I swear I heard one of my cousins say that and I was like, whoa. But no, I always knew I had to work, but it's just like, you're not prepared for all the stuff that happens. Like people are mean out here, which I've always known. But a ch the challenge that I'm proud of I overcome was, this, I've had a, a fair share of jobs, but the two that come to my mind that both of them, leaving them both unexpectedly, yeah. but. I'm proud of overcoming the bullying I've experienced at certain workplaces, especially those two that I'm thinking of. But the part that I was worried about, you know, like when I came to the conclusion that I needed to leave there, the first job was abruptly. I knew I was going to leave the fancy um, restaurant, but it's just I couldn't take it anymore. And so I'm proud of, you know, overcoming the fear of thinking, oh, I'm not going to find nothing else to get here and I finally have found my job and no more switching up. I know now to stand up for myself because seriously, they don't tolerate that at my current job. So like there should be, and also if you stand up for yourself, like right there, and I have a tendency of burying my feelings. So it's like, speak up for yourself as soon as you experience even the slightest bit of thing so we can all just move on. What are some key qualities you look for in a partner and have those qualities gotten evolved since you've gotten older? Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> so key qualities, my family knows me like the back of my hand, so they know that I have a type and I really haven't said my type. Well, no, I, yes, I have, but I haven't dove in and now I just, I don't care anymore. I like at this point in my life it may sound sad to say out loud but you know you like someone who just likes you for yourself and to be all honest you know i've had like you know a, a justin bieber type guy growing up um you know someone who i'm a sucker for pierced ears like for on a guy i don't know why they just look so like cute every single time um of course i'm tatted so like tattoos but he quality is just, you know, someone who's nice and sweet and who loves me for myself. And in all honesty, it's like, it's been very difficult growing up. That's been like the one thing, and especially as I'm getting older. I'm 22, I turn 23 next year, and I, ugh, it's just weird. And you know, eventually, this is the age where people usually find their person, let's say they already have them already. I don't even consider myself, sh I, am, I have shy tendencies, but it's like, at this point, I don't really have that anymore. I mean, cause yes, I don't go that many places other than work to the mall um, and all that stuff. But it's just like, where do you go to find your person? People find them at the most random places. But I'm avoiding this question, but <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, Key Claude is like someone who just loves me for me. At this point in my life, I've gotten to that point. Before it was like, you know, nice, kind, sweet, you know, can get along with my family good, my parents good. Number three, question number three. 
what's the worst or funniest thing you, that's ever happened to you on a date or a social event? This one made me laugh because she knows I've never been on a date before. Janelle, you're being funny. But um, I, yeah, I've never been on a date before. I'm surprised. I've said it before too. Um, like I said, nobody's ever been that interested in me growing up. But like I said, I will be freaking out when I have my first date on the inside, try to play it cool. But a social event, the funniest slash weirdest thing, this is the part where I'm exposing myself because, okay, you guys watch all my videos, you will know. Last year in April, I filmed a girls weekend vlog of many that I filmed um, with some friends I had at the time. Um, and it was a fun weekend, like it was really great. Destiny wasn't um, there because she was studying abroad in London. So it was just us um, at the time. And we went to this club that no longer exists, I think, thank God, because they needed to shut that club down because you can't even be there for 30 minutes without something happening. But I was tipsy drunk, but um, I saw this guy in the line and he was my type to a T. Well, okay, not to a T. He was my type more than I've seen anything in a long time. So I was really excited. So I drunkly was like, I was like, save me a dance. He actually did. And the night went crazy. Like we danced, he ended up kissing me. And I just was so giddy. Cause yes, I'm a girl and I hate, by the way, I hate the girls who are like, stay strong girl. Like you don't need no, no man. Be real, because you get giddy every single time that um, any guy like comes in your life. Oh, it's just so normal to you. Forget that. But yeah, I was uh, really giddy. I was happy. And so that's it was funny to me because that never happens. And I was talking to the girls at the time. I was like, this is awesome because <laughs> it never happens. And I didn't think it was going to ever happen. But I was just, but and now I remember drunk Tory or tipsy Tory, more confident than normal Tory. Sad, but true. Question number four. How do you feel about dating apps? Do you think it makes finding love easier or just add more confusion and competition? Personally, I can't stand dating apps um, a little bit. I mean, I have tried. I've wasted too much money. I swear, they get you. They like, I don't know why everybody says, oh, what you have? Because like, I can see everybody that likes me. Please tell me because literally, that's that's bull crap. Because literally, when in order to see like this person that likes you because it's blurred, you have to get the plus, which costs like an arm and a leg. So it's like what? Um, but literally, dating apps. I feel like because I mean, you guys know I'm from North Carolina. I live in the country as of right now in my life. I've lived here for five years and I love it. It's quiet back here. <laughs> But I'm like 30 minutes away from like the main town, and of course like 40 minutes away from um, the capital Raleigh. Um, so it's like I feel like once I move out, whether that's in Durham or Raleigh, I will try the dating apps again because maybe it depends on my location. That's why I can't find that many. Maybe I'm just making an excuse for myself, but yeah, to answer the question, I personally don't like dating apps that much. If you could relive one moment from your past, what would it be and why? Well, <laughs> um, this is kind of sad, um, please switch up, but if you guys have been watching me since the very beginning, um, oh geez, you would know I had a brother, he's right here, <laughs> um, his name was Troy. And he passed when he was 13 and I was eight. And that was the worst day of my life. Um, and I wouldn't relive his passing because I've come to some conclusion. Um, God takes the people who he's ready to have way before their time or by their time. And he was way before his time, obviously. So I can't take the, the part back about God taking him when he was ready to have him but I can take back the fact that I shouldn't have gone to school that day 
if I would have known that I didn't have you know, more time with my brother, I wish I didn't go to school. I wish I had made up something to tell my mom I wanted to stay home. Because I just actually found out some news about the day that he passed. It's actually really infuriating right now um, to me. I'm not going to say what it is, but um, I just wish I had more time with him. I always I wish I had. This is the end of part one, and I will see you guys in part two.